Hello everyone. So the last time I shared, I said something which apparently resonated with quite a few people. And that was talking about the fact that your voice matters. And I've been thinking about this and so I thought I would come back and have a conversation around why it is then that so many of us are not using our God-given voices. You know, you get to a point in your life, and many of us I know are there already, where the things that matter to you, they're not the jobs, they're not the titles, they're not the accolades that you get from those basic things that become our daily to-dos. You rather get value and sense of fulfillment by pouring out of yourself to intentionally build others up. And I alluded to that in the last video that I did. So my personal mission statement, which I will share to you today, is to add value to everyone I meet in a tangible and a sustainable manner. And this really came out of a journey of self-discovery, of understanding and embracing exactly who I am and who I believe I'm called to be. And you know what? In this journey of self-discovery, I found out and I've accepted as truth that I have a voice and I must use it in this lifetime. And I'm going to use it in different forms. Sometimes it's going to be on a platform speaking to people. Sometimes it's going to be in a blog post. It's through my books. And of course, there's an engagement such as these. So where's your voice is my question today. And yes, I totally get it because I've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt and then went back and decided to buy the factory that made the t-shirt. So any excuse you want to bring up, I've been there. There's the pro procrastination and some of us identify so readily with procrastination that it becomes an issue. There is uncertainty. Sometimes it's about not having time or feeling that there's schedule conflicts. Sometimes it's, oh, I can't think of the topics or will I be consistent? And then, of course, there are issues around fear and anxiety, and I'm going to come back to this. But you know what? I discovered for myself, at least, that all these things put together, they're nothing but excuses. Nothing at all. So let's even take a few of them one by one. Procrastination. <laughs> I promise you that nobody has had this procrastination narrative playing out in their life more than myself. I totally get it. But you know, something happened to me about, uh, this is 10, 11 years now, and my then coach, my sister, my friend, a wonderful minister, woman of God, coach um, Dr. Anna McCoy, she taught us a principle that was called 15 minutes to destiny. And she explained how all the time we say we're procrastinating is because we keep our eyes focused on the finished product. And we don't quite realize that those little 15 minutes chunk dedicated towards something can still take us to that end result we're looking at. And she used the example of writing a book, that you look at a book, the finished product of someone else, and you feel, I can never do this. But if you would dedicate yourself 15 minutes a day, just show up in front of your computer, whether or not you write anything, you'll be amazed how many books you write. I should know, because I have four, four published books now. So procrastination is actually us choosing not to apply ourselves. And it can never be your identity because that's not the identity of Christ. And you wear and you carry Christ. So what do you do about procrastination, about time and schedule? I don't have time. No, you do have time. If you were to reflect on your whole week or perhaps your whole month, there is no way you have not found 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour that you can apply to diligently developing yourself so that you can manifest your voice on some platform or the other. Now, your voice is about the priorities that you put in your life. Like I said, if you're comfortable living with that unfulfillment, then that's okay, my brother and my sister. But if like me, you just needed to up level, you know, how you felt about yourself, then it's time to set aside some chunk, determine what works for you and begin to apply yourself in that area towards your purpose. Your voice is also important and relevant in this season. Therefore, if you catch this vision for yourself, you can't allow procrastination to steal your purpose in this time. I know a lot of people are speaking, but your voice is relevant in this season. The other thing I wanted to speak to is uncertainty. Some of us are so caught in this web of uncertainty and we spend our lives questioning ourselves. Oh, do I have anything to say? What do you mean do you have anything to say? Let me ask you a question. 
who are you benchmarking yourself with? Because sometimes the reason we feel we have nothing to say is because we're looking at some other great speaker, some motivational person out there, and we're thinking, oh, woe is me, I can never be that. Can I tell you something? On this journey of a voice that counts, that matters, that is relevant in this season per God's design, the only benchmark that you have is yourself. And so, yes, let me tell you something. One of the things I had to deal with was that sense of, but everybody's out there, everybody's talking. But as the Holy Spirit ministered to me, I want to share with you from the depth of my heart and with love and say this, you're not called to everyone. You're not. So as long as you want to do what God would have you do, I promise you that you're called to a specific audience. The best of influencers in the world, I promise you they're speaking to but a, an in, infinitesimal fraction of the global population. I mean, there's 7 billion people in the world. If you even put this in the context, if you're Nigerian like me, for instance, and we're over 200 million people, I want you to check who is the largest influencer, who has the largest followership on any social media platform. Tell me how many millions and then work the math over 200 million. We are not all called to everyone, but there is an audience that the Lord will have you speak to. So please let your voice matter in their lives in this season. Now, there is also a lot of, um, excuse my French, crap that is being put out there in the name of speaking, in the name of using our voices. And many of us are offended by, are offended by this. Let me then advise you, the decision I've taken for myself is to say this. When you are so concerned about the quality and content of what is being put out on social media, on different types of platforms, in books and stuff, then it's a challenge to you to elevate your voice past that so that people have other avenues where voices of reason, voices of integrity, voices of love and hope can come through. So we can't all just sit back and complain about what other people are doing. We actively have to be a part of transforming the landscape that we ourselves find rather disconcerting. And then another thing I have to say about stepping up and getting past this uncertainty issue is sometimes we feel that, you know, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it well. How would you know if you try? How would you know? You can never gain mastery from the sporadic. You have to show up. You have to, the people that you look at and you feel overwhelmed or intimidated by how great they are at all these things, it is because they showed up consistently. They were willing to make the mistakes. They were willing to, um, you know, look past a few things and just keep showing up. And here's the funny part. Showing up does not mean you have to be there every single day. No, that's not exactly what it means. Showing up, however, means you don't walk away from the opportunities. And sometimes you actively partner with the Holy Spirit to create those opportunities. So for you, showing up maybe once a month, but you'll be there consistently. For some others, it's showing up every evening at 6 p.m. on some platform. You'll be there consistently. Work it out according to whatever it is, but trust that as you commit to show up on this assignment of making your voice count as it should per assignment and per season, that you will gain mastery ultimately and your confidence comes from this place of mastery in your gifts. So there is also this thing about, okay, uh, I don't want to look like a copycat. You know, everybody's now um, live on Instagram. I don't want to look like that. <laughs> Listen. The things that the enemy uses to constrain our destiny are absolutely unbelievable. But I can relate and I can tell you what, let me share a personal example. So I have been a mentor for more years than I can remember in both structured and unstructured mentoring platforms. Okay, I've mentored for Wimbiz, I've mentored for Apostles in the Marketplace, I've mentored for Lagos Business School, for Faith Foundation, amongst other establishments. And there are of course some mentors and sorry, mentees that I carry by myself. But something has been pushing me to say, I want to create a structured mentoring program where I can interact with people leveraging on technology. And I've been meaning to put a flyer out there to say, hey, if you want to be mentored by me, this is how we're going to run this. And of course, the enemy comes with his own challenges to say, oh, you know, people will think you're a copycat or oh, people will think, you know, whatever. And I've had to walk back from that to say, no. No, I'm not going to buy into that argument. You know why? Like I said, I have been actively mentoring for at least 15 years, at least 15 years. And so all I will be doing in bringing it to Instagram or to Facebook or to Zoom or whatever is backing what I have been doing for years with technology. 
And guess what? Like I said before, your voice is for specific people. So yes, some people are actively out there mentoring, but some people would never sign up to them as mentors, right? And some people would never sign up to me, but there are some, I can promise you, who are right now sliding into my DM to say, please, can you mentor me on a daily basis? So you have to be able to step away from some of those funny thoughts that come to make you feel insecure, make you feel you're a copycat. You have to step back and refuse to be, um, what's the word now? You have to realize that if you don't step up to the things God is laying on your heart, what you're actually doing is you're becoming accountable for some other people staying in their broken down states, whereas you could otherwise have been accountable for elevating the lives of some people. So let me ask you, what do you think you are called to? Or maybe the question is, what are you sitting on? What are you doing with your voice? Maybe you want to take this journey with me and see what we can make happen as you embrace who you are and what your assignment is. And yes, yes, I promise you, some people will misinterpret your motives. But can I tell you that you need to get to the point where you decide to at least satisfy yourself that you are not on a self-serving journey. And as long as that is the core of your heart, as long as what you're doing is not about, oh, let me be out there and let me be seen, I promise you, you will sleep soundly whether or not people are saying things about you. And if you haven't heard it, let me tell you, <laughs> if they're talking, they're talking already anyway. They might as well be talking about the great things you're doing. I have a voice and I've determined to use it right? I've determined to use it. And I can't tell you enough that if you don't use your voice, you will stay in this place of frustration for a very long time. So sometimes the challenge with using our voice is that we think about the topics. What will I talk about? Honestly, I can't tell you enough that if you allow yourself, you will inadvertently partner with the devil to stifle your potential, your impact, and of course your destiny. So making that sacrifice on that altar of nothing but excuses is not what you want to do with your life. No. What will you talk about? Hmm. So what is there not to talk about? That's my bigger question to you. Let me ask you a few things. For instance, what are the things that interest you? If you have the opportunity to change something about your life, your work, your friendships, your relationships, your business, what would those things be? And how would you go about them? So what do you know now that you wish you had known earlier and why? What tragedies have you gone through? What lessons did you gain from them? What victories too? And what lessons did you gain from them? So what areas have you struggled with in your life? And how have you, you know, dealt with those struggles or how are you dealing with them? Those are things you can share with people. What areas have you gained mastery and how did you journey from who you used to be to this point? I mean, there's literally too much to talk about. And as long as you are speaking or teaching or writing as your authentic self, based on your original experiences, your authentic experiences, your personal experiences, with that ultimate aim of adding value to someone else, I promise you, you will do great and you never lack things to talk about. So the last thing I'm going to talk about with you today is anxiety and fear. And this is one of the biggest reasons that people give me all the time about why they're not using their voices, why they're not stepping up to their platforms. I'm afraid. Can I promise you something? We are all afraid. Yes, even me, I said it. And the only difference actually is to what degree and how willing are we to look our fears in the face and choose to do it afraid anyway. That's my personal mantra. Do it afraid. I've never forgotten when I heard that expression first from Joyce Meyer, maybe about 16, 17 years ago. It changed something in my thinking. Listen, when I tell people most times, most times when I say that I'm scared, I'm uncertain, they tend to look at me with a bit of unbelief. In fact, those who know how to raise one eyebrow, I always say that sometimes you have the ones whose eyebrow is almost touching the hairline in, in that disbelief. But here's the thing, I'm afraid a lot and I'm not ashamed to say it because I have gained a level of mastery over my fears and I choose 99% of the time to show up anyway. I say 99 because it's not perfect and that's for you to know that we're all a work in progress. And there's a question, you know, what is this about this fear thing? What is this is power to hold, hold us back, hold us down? 
Why are we always so certain that everything will go wrong? Why are we always so sure that the next person is more confident and more capable than we are? Why are we always self-questioning? You know, when you fixate on things, on how perfectly the video would go, I mean, I've made a few um, uh, slips in the course of making this video, and I'm not sure I'm going to do a second take. I'm not sure it's required. See, when you keep fixating on perfection, when you keep fixating on, on you know, what other people are, are doing and how that may compare with what you want to do, actually, what is happening is that you are more fixed on and focused on making an impression than on adding value. The minute, honestly, the minute you determine that I just want to add value to somebody, I just want to, you know, provoke something in them that takes them to the next level. I want to provoke something in them that takes them out of a situation they felt they were stuck in. I want to see them grow. I want to see them fly just because I was there to, you know, be the voice of reason, the voice of support. When you are focused on the value to someone else, you are less concerned about, oh, was my makeup on flick? Did I make some errors? And, and so on and so forth. So let me ask you, when you're thinking fair and it's holding you back, why? If I can promise you that till today, every time, every single time I have to speak on some platform or the other, even here in my own living room, my heart starts to pump, beating very fast. A little bit of anxiety but I have learned to say look girl you either want to do this or you don't and if you want to do it why do you want to do it if it's because it matters let's go I heard a lady say something once she said death is a given so there's no sense worrying about it that actually what you need to worry about is whether you have truly lived I don't know if that was her original expression or if she was quoting someone, but it made a fundamental impact on me. That I want to be sure in this life that I have truly lived. And that's why I'm showing up and I'm going to keep showing up. So this is really all I wanted to share with you today. It's a reiteration of the fact that your voice matters, yes. But actually it's also a challenge to come up higher to actually then use that voice because, as I said earlier, your voice is relevant for a season and your voice is actually on an assignment to those that are called to you and to whom you are called. So let me encourage you to toss your excuses out of the window from fear to uncertainty, uncertainty about what to talk about and all those things. Toss them out the window. All the excuses. Just prayerfully let God show you where you have dropped the ball on your assignments because you allowed all those excuses to cowl you into silence. And in the same place of prayer, let him show you where best he would have you deploy your gifts, the gift of your words, as will be made manifest in the different ways that he would have you do as your authentic self, by the way. I hope this has been useful to you. <laughs> this is me using my voice regardless, and I hope it means something to someone. I will see you next time. And next time I'm going to be talking about the two sides of the same lawn. What's that about? Mm. We'll see. <laughs> Take care.